question first. Let's go to the chaos that is Australian politics with a question from Pete Johnson. Good evening. Do the pollies take the public as total mugs? I considered standing for the Senate, but desisted due to the dual citizenship rules. Now, if a mere mortal such as me is aware of the relevant laws, how on earth can it be that politicians fail to even ask questions of their parties and the legion of cronies and so-called political advisers? They all knew or should have known for years and kept it as their grubby secret. When will any, just any of our elected representatives of any shade finally and genuinely respect rather than show utter contempt for the people to whom they are supposedly accountable? Angus Taylor. Well, thanks for the question, Pete. And I, I think you're quite right to, to point out that it is incumbent on politicians to rebuild trust with the Australian people. Uh, I think there has been a breach of trust, and I understand uh, what, you, what you're saying in that question. Now, there's no quick fix. Do you, do you understand one. his point? He's basically saying there's a kind of conspiracy here to hide this grubby secret yeah. from the public. Well, I, I, don't, I don't think there's a conspiracy, but I think you're fair to point out that there's been a breach of trust. And so the critical thing for every member of parliament now is to come clean. That is the crucial thing to do, because that's how we rebuild trust. Uh, every one of us has to look at our own circumstances and come clean with the Australian people. Uh, it's been disappointing to me that that hasn't happened as quickly as it should have. Uh, I think it's incumbent now on everybody to do that. And that includes the members of the Labor Party. And I still feel as though Bill Shorten is hiding dual citizens in the basement. It's time for everyone to come. So you're accusing, oh, you're accusing <laughs> Labor of having a grubby... Well, I, I'm saying... Uh, I, I, I said, Tony, everyone needs to come we clean on this. We've you got to rebuild trust. We had to drag you to the 1st of December as a date for disclosure. We had to drag you to that date, the 1st of December. We don't have anything to hide because our processes sorted this out before people ran. You guys just seem to ignore Section Well, that's 24. in theory, sorry. I mean, there, <laughs> well, no, there are really. at least four politicians who are very likely from the Labor Party who are very likely to be sent to the uh, High Court for judgment. All the people you're talking about, Tony, had taken steps to renounce. And the reason they did is because our processes vet people. We check on these things. People take steps. These guys did nothing. They pretended it wasn't even there. And then we had to drag them kicking and screaming to the first How do we get to this position, though, when it's date? these guys, not our guys, when ultimately the High Court will make that judgment? Because, Tony, what you're seeing is a bunch of Liberals and Nationals, including one Liberal and one National by-election, uh, that weren't eligible to run for the parliament. Now, I know they like to try to say that this is an everyone problem, but the fact is we had serious professional processes in place, and you can see that because anyone that they can throw a cloud over on our side already took steps to renounce before the election. Uh, well, I'll quickly go back. You, uh, you obviously yeah. want to make a point relating to that. Well, 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 I do, Tony. I mean, uh, it, it is for the High Court to define what reasonable steps are, not for the Labor Party, and it is very clear that Justine Kay was a dual citizen, uh, was a citizen of the UK when she was elected to Parliament. And, and that is a very serious issue. It's an issue that the High Court will decide, not the Labor Party. But Angus, you're in, implicit in what you're saying is that she took steps, but John Alexander didn't take steps, Fiona Nash didn't take steps. Well, you, you, you can take whatever take steps, steps you like, Terry, but they've got to be the right steps. Well, mate, and, and that's how, that's how we re-establish trust. Because our we side was right looking steps. at how you deal with this. Right. Can I just say that arguing between your yourselves probably won't be... <laughs> that's <laughs> right. Time, but no. can we bring in someone else? Judith Sloan, um, just take the Labor Party's case for a moment. Uh, there is a High Court judgment in 1992, the Sykes-Cleary case, that might give them some hope. Does it give them real hope? Well, I think Angus is completely right in the sense that uh, it's not absolutely clear what reasonable steps mean. And, you know, you might be right that the Labor Party, you know, took some baby steps, but they may deem to be inadequate. I don't so, think baby steps, though. Well, I think, you know, I think the fact that we had one parliamentarian who was clearly a dual citizen at the time of election is an issue for you. And it seems to me that going back to this issue of trust, isn't it something you should actually not be fighting about? Yeah. No, I agree. And say... I actually don't like this provision in, in the Constitution. I mean, it, people who, who were born overseas or who have parents who were born overseas, why should they be feeling second-class citizens? I think this is not That's what Australia is right. about. Let's just go to the other end of the panel. Now, Shara, you are, in fact, a dual citizen. I am. I mean, how, do, how does this look? You're an American and an Australian. Yes. Um, how does this look to you? 
It seemed rather ludicrous to me that somebody would actually be running for office knowing that it's not legal, aside from you know whether or not we should make it legal, but if it's not legal to run as a dual citizen, and you know you're a dual citizen, then why run in the first place? Yeah, Brian, um, I said in the promo, um, with your sort of long search through the universe for aliens, you <laughs> never would have imagined finding so many in the Cab Republic. I, I, last, last time I was on here, I didn't know that Malcolm Roberts was a fellow Brit. <laughs> I've been, I've been nice. It is, we don't you have that. treat him like he was an alien. No. <laughs> we don't have that provision in, in the UK, though. Um, and as, as you say, I suppose the, the point is that whilst the logic of it I think probably should be questioned. It's an unusual thing. But having said that, as you said, the, the, the fact that lawmakers have to abide by the law and operate yes. within the framework as it exists at the time and then change it in Parliament. Don't, and they, oh, that's definitely. Well, uh, yeah, the only we way we could change this one is having a referendum and no one yeah. seems willing to do don't that. Have that's one, right. Don't, don't have one of those. <laughs> right, we did that. Another <laughs> <laughs> hundred million dollars. <laughs> yeah. Yes, this is not one to leave the universe. This yeah. is something else. Um, I'll just quickly go back to our questioner. Um, now, You've heard what the politicians have said. You're obviously pretty angry about this. Do you accept um, their explanations? I find it inconceivable. I think, you know, every minister, every MP has so many political advisers, maybe family and friends in the office. You know, nobody ever advised them that this was a problem. Well, this isn't my nobody point. Nobody saw it coming. I mean, sorry to interrupt you, sir, yeah. but this is actually my point. I mean, in the Labour Party... We filled out paperwork this thick to run for federal parliament. It was vetted by our state branch, our federal branch. And now it's going to be vetted by the high court. And, so and when people were counts. vetted, and, when, and as is very common, they had a parent who was uh, from overseas, then of course they were advised to take steps and they did take steps. Can I just go, uh, Pete, you, you've come in here quite angry about <laughs> this. Um, do you think this can only be resolved by dissolving parliament and having a fresh election? Um, not necessarily, but it's just an endless endless chain of events isn't it like mm. you know with the MPs having their various properties or the expenses yeah, scandals um, chopper gate you know it's always it doesn't meet community expectations we're ever so sorry you know it won't happen again it's just quite ridiculous I think you, and I think most I, people think that if I ask you this do you think that this process where everyone has to disclose by the 1st of December will go some way to restoring confidence in whether or not people are eligible to be in the parliament, at least, as a start? Until the next scandal, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Angus, uh, can, I, can I just ask you, uh, wouldn't it be the easiest thing now for the Governor-General to step in, dissolve parliament, and instead of having a whole series of staggered by-elections that go for a long time into next year, just have an election and resolve everybody at once? Well, well, I don't think the election resolves the issue. What resolves the issue is people mm. fessing up on mm. their... Citizenship. Yeah, but once, that, once the, they do, it, we, we could be eight well, or nine people down the track. Well, well let, let's see. But that's what has to happen, Tony. And you are absolutely right, Pete. Look, uh, you know, if we are to re-establish trust with the Australian people as politicians, and that is the job of every one of us to do that, and that means coming clean, and that is the only way we'll resolve the issue. But that doesn't... I mean, his point is, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but... His point is this come clean process that's been created where everyone discloses by the 1st of December, that only deals with this issue. You're saying this is an example of a much bigger issue of trust where people think that elected members of parliament are just not going to do the right thing. And so we actually have to, in order to deal with that, not just deal with citizenship, but deal with the standards of conduct that people engage so in Terry, public Terry life. So Terry Butler, should there be an election? Oh, I think there should be, actually. I think that's pretty clear. And it does resolve this issue because nobody's going to be silly enough, I wouldn't have thought, uh, to run for the next general election. Would, without would, getting would you as a Labor MP be happy to see the Governor-General step in and dissolve I don't Parliament. want to see a dismissal. Hmm. That's not what I'm advocating for at all. I think that any Labor MP would be horrified by the idea of uh, the vice-regal representative in Australia coming in and dissolving a government. But Malcolm Turnbull could very well do the right thing and call an election. And uh, that does a quick one to Judith. Election or not? I mean, is this the best way to resolve it with so many cases pending? I, I don't think so. I mean, uh, Peter, I wish it were simple. I mean, you see the case of, of my friend Josh Frydenberg, whose mother came here stateless from Hungary, who may be unwittingly roped into being a Hungarian citizen without his knowledge. Well, th the trouble is... Each case is individual. I mean, it seems to me 
if someone's born overseas, clearly they kind of got to work it out. If your parents are born overseas, that becomes a bit more complicated. So that's the only thing. It, as, I mean, I think sadly, and I, 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 I hear your frustration, is that it all has to be worked out on an individual by individual basis. So it's not actually clear that having an election would solve that. You say people wouldn't put themselves up unless they were absolutely sure, but it is a really complicated issue in, in many cases, including what country people were born well, then, with boundaries changing But in what the do life. you do about it then? Because a process for the current cohort of MPs only affects the current cohort of MPs. If you're saying having another election won't fix anything, mm -hmm. then that necessarily implies that we'll have in the next parliament the same problem. No, no, well, I think it has to be sorted out, you know, in the next six to, to, to uh, 12 months. I mean, we were talking about this... Does this uh, government last that long? Well, the <laughs> thing about it is that it's this is the classic black swan, it seems to me, that, in fact... The truth of the matter, if someone wants to go and look at the records, there were absolutely heaps of Section 44 violations over the years, in my opinion. Um, I can think of some off the top of my head. But it was because, you know, there was some guy, some barrister in Western Australia decided to bell the cat with uh, one of the Green Senators, and it's all unravelled from that. So it's one of those terrible things that I think has just got to be sorted out to the point where every individual commands uh, the confidence of everyone that they meet Section 44. Okay, let's move on. The next question is from Howard Sofer. Uh, 